Let's be radically honest. The reason you decided to become an entrepreneur wasn't to put yourself last and sacrifice your health and well-being. You were looking for freedom. Imagine if you could create the life and business of your dreams without working any harder. Imagine if stress and overwhelm were a thing of the past. What if the way forward isn't about a brand new approach and all you need is a mindset shift instead? Business intuitive coach Ranchelle Van Bryce is here to guide you through letting go of the underlying beliefs that are holding you back so you can stop making a living and start creating your epic life. Hey, welcome everyone. First and foremost, I want to celebrate. I have new music and I'm so excited. I love, love, love the older uh, version. And you know, it's kind of like um, an entrepreneurship, you know, and you're building your brand, you're doing your thing. And then there's this opportunity to do a two degree, a two degree, two millimeter shift. And so I want everyone to, if you're in that space and place right now where you're trying to embrace something different to do that, you know, just the way, just because we've done something a certain way before doesn't mean that there's not a time or opportunity for us to kind of shift into a new way of being, a new way of doing. Um, And so I'm really excited about about the intro, the music, because it really actually kind of totally fits into what I want to talk about today which is in my world of, of coaching, um, uh, I'm a marketer as well. I train sales. I, you know, I have something called the profit formula. I own more than one coaching business. I, you know, I have several different things. And all throughout, I guess, the last 10 years, you know, when people talk about this resistance to selling, the marketing world and other coaches have said, well, you're not, you're not selling, you're in service. And at first that really resonated with me. I'm like, yeah, that's right. That's me. I am in service. I love serving people. I love assisting. I love helping. I love guiding. Well, nine months ago, as I really started to feel into what could, what's the downside of being in service? And I thought, ooh, this is interesting. I can feel this shift within myself of there's this light side, right? The light, bright, shiny, empowered, high vibe side of service. And then like everything else, there is a, I'll say a dark side, a lower density energy of of service. And so today... We're going to explore that. Um, And so I'd just like you to keep an open mind. If you were like me, which is like, yeah, I'm serving, I'm not selling. And part of it certainly started because, you know, um, I've never had a resistance to selling. I love sales. I love promoting. What I've I've struggled with in the past is promoting myself is selling something that I'm doing. It's easy peasy for me to promote other people easy for me to like sell different programs for other people but when it goes to something to do something for myself I did I struggled there was a part of me that was really struggling now there are different reasons why some of it had to do with value and worthiness as I moved through that and realized I could let go of that limiting belief and create a new empowering belief that became less and less. Then I started to be in awareness of something called human design. And in human design, there are certain um, design types, certain types, energy types that are meant to self-promote. And there are others that are meant to wait for an invitation. I'm a waiter for invitationer. <laughs> so it made sense to me then because as I had more confidence and more self-esteem and more love for myself, I still was hesitant. I won't say a struggle, but I was hesitant to promote myself. And so then when I had that, had a, I'm just serving others, it's still that hesitancy didn't go away. And that's when I started to explore what if it wasn't about the words that I was using. If you've been to my show before, you'll know that I talk lots about the importance of the energy of words. What if it wasn't the word necessarily um Uh, to use the word of being of service or serving, but what if there is something else? And so for months now, I've been exploring this whole concept, this whole movement that the coaching industry and marketers have talked about of saying, no, you're not selling, you're you're serving. So if you read the the introduction to be here, 
uh, you know, it, it talks about this open, friendly uh, chat we're going to have about sales versus service mantra. And I'm really excited to, to share that with you. Now, I guess before I do that, who the hell am I? So my name is Ranchal Van Bryce. I am a business intuitive, and I often call myself an intuitive business strategist because myself and your guides can create a kick-ass plan for you if you are an entrepreneur or profession. Um, I'm also referred to as a sacred commerce coach because I believe in the sacred art of business, and I believe that sacred love, sacred commerce, and sacred, eco sacred economics are a thing, and that part of what we're moving to is from this old way of doing business to this new way of doing business, and it really is about the sacred art of business and bringing the sacredness of the high vibe into it. And so what I have found from um, for the people that I work with is a lot of entrepreneurial women are really struggling with, and um, they're not even aware of self-esteem and self-confidence and self-love. And there's a lack of clarity and they're looking for something, but they're not really sure what that something is. And they, they think the problem may be even a strategy, right? They might think the problems, they don't have the right foundation or they don't have the right tool. The actual problem is, is this slight, uh, slight shift in mindset to be created, this uh, different way of looking at things, an opportunity, and this is kind of my, my superpower, my genius is to look at situations and go, oh, there's a pattern that's showing up. There's a pattern of behavior that's showing up, a pattern of words that's maybe showing up, pattern of limiting beliefs that's showing up. And so what I do is kind of bust through those. And the reason why I can do that is because this was my story. <laughs> I spent, oh my goodness, when I had the Curves franchises, I think I spent one year, $100,000 um, in one year trying to learn a new way, new strategies, new foundations, new systems. And don't get me wrong, all of that's important. But in the end, really what, uh, what I needed was a new way to look at things. I needed to see how my unconscious self, my limiting beliefs was directing the show, how the how my programming, my conditioning as a, as a child through no fault of my parents, uh, but how that conditioning was leading me to be in a place and space of trying to prove myself, trying to achieve things. I was so focused on the end result of making money. In the end, I had an, ended up burning out. I had tons of stress in my life, uh, loss of friendships, a loss of a marriage, a loss of health. And, um, and I just knew that there had to be a different way. And so I spent many years after letting the curse franchises go, uh, figuring that out. Fast forward to today and my opportunity to be here with you. So whether you're listening to the recording or you're here with me live, super excited that you're here. All right. So sales versus service. I even had a program that talked about um, ser service versus sales. Uh, years ago, um, I, had, I had a sales program. And it's a great program. Uh, and, I, you know, the, the title, again, I can see the, uh, the opportunity in that because we really do as coaches, you know, I think it's for anybody, but I'm going to speak from a coaching, consulting, entrepreneurial person. We all want to be in of service to people. We all have a purpose that we're trying to fulfill. And so what does that purpose look like for each one of us? And so when we move into the space of thinking we're being of service, to somebody, um, then we feel good, right? We feel good. And feeling good is important for sure. Here's the downside to being in a service. And, you know, as I was contemplating this, um, I came up with seven. There are seven downsides to being of service. Now, I'm not telling you to throw that energy away of being of service. But what I want to share with you is kind of some highlights of you know, having an opportunity to maybe take a look at this and go, is this attitude, is this energy actually of service to me? Is it, is it benefiting me or is it keeping you stuck? Is it keeping you blocked maybe in looking at uh, 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 sales in what it's meant to, to, to be? Like we're we, from the promotional perspective, right? Part of the reason why this switch went from, you know, think of it as service versus selling is that over and over again, I hear entrepreneurial women say, I, I love this part of my business, but I hate sales. I, I hate marketing. I hate promoting myself. And so, of course, um, people like myself, marketers, will go, oh, well, then 
change the verbiage where you're not selling your F service. So again, I'm, and I'm, I'm giving you all of these examples because I want you to see how it has maybe up until now been of service to you. Maybe it's worked really well for you. I also want to bust through some myths today um, about why sales isn't bad and, um, and what, uh, what you might be resisting in sales. Some of the reasons why maybe you're resisting um, selling. And so we'll talk about that as well. Okay, well, let's get busy. So one of the downsides of coming strictly from the place of I'm in of service of someone can actually be what's referred to as like a product misfit. So what do I mean by that? So if your product or service isn't genuinely useful or beneficial for a certain customer, trying to serve them, right, instead of actually trying to, to sell them can be counterproductive. Now, if you are truly, um, the, and in words, it's, this is tricky, and I get this, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a fine line. And so my intention is not to create confusion, but for having you to look at this a different way, okay? So if I'm truly in service of, to someone, and I'm listening, and I'm in a, an enrollment call or a sales call or discovery session or whatever um, you might call it, and I can sense that this is not going to be a great fit, true service would mean that I would be honest with that person, that I would be like, this isn't a great fit. Now, what happens is a lot of people think that when you're in sales mode, right, you uh, aren't in service mode. And for me, as a salesperson, I've, you know, I've been, I've been selling since I was like 14 years old, right? I was, uh, I worked as a janitor um, at my mom and dad's hotel in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. My father told me that I had the most important job at the hotel because as a janitor, I cleaned the front entrance. And in cleaning the front entrance, I was selling slash promoting the hotel. And if the front entrance wasn't clean, that people would make an assessment or a judgment about the hotel that may or may not, in fact, be true. So at a very young age, I was given this opportunity to look at things a little bit differently. Okay, so let's go back to this example of product misfit, right? So truthfully, if you are of service, you will see that you are uh, a mismatch or your client is a mismatch. Now, here's where I think product misfit really fits in to when we want to be of service. Because if you're only being of service to somebody and they're not a good fit for you, and you have this of service mindset or attitude, you will do something like accept them as a client when they're not a good fit for you. Because you wouldn't consider that saying to them, I'm sorry, I'm not a good fit for you, but let me recommend somebody else. Or even saying, I'm sorry, I'm not a good fit for you, period, explanation, kind of end of conversation, right? So the downside of thinking that I'm having an enrollment conversation and I'm being of service is that I'll be like, I could absolutely be of service to this person, but my product, which would be coaching, might not be the best because that client might not be my ideal client, right? My ideal client, my clients are really awesome. They're very cool. And so it, so I have, I have a, I guess a protocol that I follow, a system that I follow. See, systems are great, but I, I intuitively also sense when someone's not a good fit for me. So if I was only in service for that person, I would say, hell yes, I can coach you. But I want to be in service and I want to be true to myself. I want to ensure that they are a good fit for me because then I can show up 100% for that person, right? And so uh, the product misfit comes in is that it can be totally lead to customer dissatisfaction if you're unservice to somebody else and they're not a good fit. So that's what I mean by product misfit. Less so of, you know, that... Um, they wouldn't be a good, like you wouldn't be a good match for them, but vice versa, right? So that's the first one that I wanted to talk about. If you can believe it already, 
already. Uh, we're ready for our first break. Thank you so much for joining me here. My name is Ranchal. The show is Ignite Your Success with Ranchal. And of course, we are on Inspired Choices Network. Thank you. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something you have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with business intuitive coach Ranchel Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchel Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. I'm just here, busy grooving to the new music. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me here. Again, my name is Ranchal. You are listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchal. We're on Inspired Choices Network. We're live. We're also live on YouTube. We're live on Inspired Choices Network TV. Um, and I'm excited to have you here with me. So we're talking about this whole paradigm shift of uh, sales versus service and how years ago the shift came from don't worry you're not selling you're in service and I'm kind of opening up maybe Pandora's box and saying what if now there's not a time uh, uh, for a new paradigm shift and we can see maybe some of the dark side some of the, the negative some of the lower density energy around the word being of service to people versus actually just talking about we want to en enroll someone, we want to sell something. It's okay. I mean, it's okay to want to sell your programs, your products, your services, right? We're passionate about it. We're, uh, we're, we, we love what we do. There's a purpose. And that can be whether you're working in retail. I mean, I've worked retail. I've worked hospitality. Um, I used to own Curves Fit franchises. I mean, without sales, we don't have a business. We actually have a hobby. So I don't want to downplay either the importance of being okay with selling, being okay with promotion, being okay with advertising. I think it's important. And I think the opportunity you have here is to look at this and go, okay, wait a minute. Um, what about me is resisting selling? What about, you know, what about me doesn't want to be a salesperson? Like, would that be so horrible if someone said, oh, you're a great salesperson? Would you be horrified? I know lots of coaches would be like, oh, I'm not a salesperson. I'm a coach, right? And so why would it be bad for you to be a salesperson, right? There would be no exchange of cash flow if there wasn't a sales conversation. Think about that. There would be no exchange of cash flow. You know, when I talk about sacred commerce um, in the sacred art of business, and, and sacred economics, there, there needs to be an exchange. Right now we're using cash or kind of cashless, but we're using the right this concept of money. <laughs> you know, we're using the concept of money in exchange. <clears throat> and that's important because I, right, I, I use cash to, to, uh, to pay mortgage. I use cash to pay rent, all of those pieces, right? You know, to uh, buy gas, to buy groceries. A sales transaction is essential. When we, when we overemphasize on service, we can be so focused, excuse me, on serving that the necessary assertiveness, so I'll use assertiveness, in selling can be lost. What do I mean by that? You know, in um, not in every instance, but, you know, uh, certainly 
uh, in sales training. So when I, when I teach sales, I talk about overcoming objections. And an objection just is how I look at an objection. So when someone says, I don't have the time, I don't have the money, let me think about it. I've got to talk to my husband. Those are kind of like the four main uh, objections, right, to uh, someone saying yes to buying whatever it is, whether you're selling jewelry, right, lipstick. Um, I don't know. I'm just looking at all my things like pictures, books, like coaching services. It doesn't matter whether it's a, whether it's a product or service. There can be an objection. And an objection simply is, from, in a sales technique, is that the person who's talking, who's wanting to enroll, let's say, or wanting to sell something, possibly hasn't really found out all of the reasons why someone wants the thing. Or what they're trying to sell isn't a good fit. Because they haven't asked enough questions to find out, is this a good product or service to help somebody, right? And so I go back into, and I think about that in my retail days, you know, when um, uh, I started to learn formal sales training, right? I was taught by this incredible guy named Don Slobowski. Don, I don't know if you ever hear this. Thank you so much. At a company called Winter Co., which is no longer in existence. But he was the first person who formally taught sales. My dad did amazing things. Um, and taught me lots, you know, with regards to the hospitality and selling. But Don really gave me a formal sales training. And I remember him saying an objection ranch out simply means that you didn't take the time to find out what that person really, really needs. And an objection is just an opportunity for you to kind of go back, revisit what was said, and maybe what questions you didn't ask and find out you know, more information, because obviously what you're trying to sell them, they don't feel like is the good fit or is a right fit, right? Now, there's a whole bunch of psychology as well behind sales. Um, and, you know, I may, I'll make a mental note here. Maybe that's what I'll do here. Um, in August, I'll do something on the psychology of sales. But there is a psychology of sales, meaning our lizard brain, our amygdala goes into resistance of buying anything. And it's due to safety and security. So I'll just kind of side note that and go back to what I want to share with you. So if we're only um, focusing on service and we don't develop a skill set, right? Because that's really what sales is, is, is a skill set. To overcome an objection, we're missing out on this piece. So that's what I mean by the necessary assertiveness. Not assertiveness as in telling somebody, but your own self-assertiveness. Having the, I guess, the oomph <laughs> to ask, ask important questions so that you can provide the best you know, experience the best product or best service for the person that you're speaking to. So that is another downside to overemphasizing service. Um, another downside to overemphasizing service, and this again, um, a little bit of a paradigm shift, opening the Pandora's box is manipulation. So what I see over and over again is my industry, both of coaching and, and um, marketers, are manipulating you the consumer um, and uh, to think that there's no sales conversation that's going to happen. There's no enrollment conversation. There's no asking for the sale to happen. And I think that's unfortunate. So there's a, a huge manipulation that I see that's going on in the industries because if you, you know, if you approach it, you know, from the perspective of you put it out there that you're just, you know, wanting to do a discovery session or um, a free coaching call or a free consulting call or a, a conversation and you have it in that your end result is to close the deal. And there's nothing wrong with that end result. There's nothing wrong thinking that, but you've promoted it as not that, then people come to you with a certain expectation and then they feel kind of jilted. Um, uh, the bait and switch is what it's called in the in marketing terms, right? I'm going to bait you into something and I'm going to switch the intention. That feels gross for everybody. That feels gross. So then the consequence of that, um, it's really funny, is one of the consequences of that has been, for me, I offer a, you know, a, a coaching call or a discovery call. Uh, all the time for free. And I and I find myself saying over and over again, this isn't code for a sales call. I have something to sell for sure. I'm a coach. If you want to hire me, I'm for sale, right? You, absolutely, you can hire me. Uh, absolutely, I would like to work with you. Absolutely, I have like lots of different businesses that, um, you know, I'm happy, I'm happy, happy, happy to take people's money. I am. 
but I don't I don't use it the way that um, my industry is using it. And so I think that's part of this manipulation tactic. And so now, you know, the consumer is really wary when you truly want to be of service and say, let me, you know, have a conversation with you. Let me share with you, you know, some thoughts. They're scared. So that manipulation tactic has turned people who could possibly totally benefit from someone who is of service, who wants to, you know, let me just, you know, guide you, let me know, you can have what's in my head for free. That's what I always say to people, right? It comes to me for free, you can have it for free. So, you know, from that perspective. So manipulation also is, um, is a thing right now. And so that can be the downside. If you're truly not coming from a place of service, um, then you're in manipulation. No judgment, just be honest with yourself, right? And so if it's an enrollment call, call it an enrollment call, right? If it's a discovery session, at least be honest about it. it's a discovery session to see if maybe I can be of service to you. That would be a word that I could use maybe, to see if perhaps maybe I'm a good fit for you, right? So if I'm having a discovery session, that's what I'm having. I'm like, you know, let's hang out and have conversation to see if we could work together. Right. But at least be upfront. Don't give this bullshit story about, oh, it's just it's just a discovery session. And then in, in the end, what you're doing is, and again, there's nothing wrong with having a sales call. There's nothing wrong with sales. So that's the other side. That's, that's the other downside. Next, financial sustainability. You know, here's the thing. We do require cash right now, you know, uh, and or cashless. We do require this exchange of money in this world. And so what can happen with some people when they say, I'm of service to people, this financial sustainability and really what it's connected to is unhealthy boundaries and burnout. So all three of these um, pieces, I said there was seven that I wanted to talk about. What, so financial su sustainability, burnout, and setting unhealthy boundaries are all kind of together. Because if you're truly, if you are um, lacking confidence in your sales skill, or lacking value or worthiness. If you have limiting beliefs or conditioning around that, and then you bring in, I'm going to be of service to people. What happens is uh, overgiving. There is this overgiving pattern of behavior that shows up. And then after the overgiving, there's resentment and there's anger and there's then which leads to fear, right? And that just leads to a whole other lower density energies of emotion all because we're now being conditioned to be, let's be of service, right? And so the downside of that in this financial sustainability piece is you do need to make money. You need to create manifest money. And if your focus is on service might lead to underpricing your services or giving away too much for free. And that's, and that's a thing. And the other thing that's happening in this world, and this is where I see the shift happening, is that um, from a psychological perspective, uh, there's something called the law of reciprocity. Now, um, I promise you this is connected to what I'm talking about. The law of reciprocity says, if, um, uh, you, if, you, if I do something nice for you, so if I give you an ebook or a quiz in exchange you're going to give me by there's a feeling that happens this law of reciprocity you feel obligated then to give me your time of day give me like your name and email now this law of reciprocity has been, I'll say, bastardized, you know, in the in the world of marketing. And I mean, it's okay. I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm just, that's just the word that came to me. So no longer are we actually having this feeling of law of reciprocity, but what's being created now is almost a resentment. I will resentfully give you, or I will trepidatiously give you my name and email but if the content that doesn't come the exchange of like my name and email pretty damn important right so if so if the content i'm receiving isn't supportive of the reason why i gave you my name and email um me the consumer and you as the consumer you don't stick around Right. So there's again, there's this um, there is a there's a new way of showing up in business. Like I, I, I'm 
I'm been gifted to see what's coming in the pipeline. It is a shift moving from chasing energy, pursuit energy to one of creation and manifestation and like, oh, this will be so much awesomeness happening, right? And so we're in awareness right now of this shift. So how does the selling and, and service thing fit into it? It's, it's the same thing. Are you using the language of service to manipulate, as I said before? Are you overgiving? Is the language of being of service causing you or linking you to the conditioning of you must overgive, you must provide value, you must prove your worthiness and value by give, 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 give. And that's where like the cup runneth over of giving, but who's fulfilling your cup, right? You can only give so much before you'll feel depleted. And so I think what's happening in the world is there's this depleted energy happening. And I believe that part of it is this overgivingness because we're conditioned to be of service. It's just my own personal um, point of view at this time. I don't have the data to support, but I, I know that the data will be given to me when the time is right to, to share the data with everyone. All right. Oh, can you believe it? It is time again to have a wonderful opportunity for you to go grab a drink, take a breath, uh, and uh, let's go to our next commercial break. My name is Ranchal. In case you didn't know, you're with me on Ignite Your Success with Ranchal, and we're on Inspired Choices Network. Let's groove together to the new music. Thanks. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something you have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with business intuitive coach Ranchel Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchel Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back. And again, thank you so much. Whether you're listening afterwards or you're joining me live, I certainly appreciate you. We're talking today as I'm opening up this whole Pandora's box about maybe using the word service versus sales isn't, um, it's no longer benefiting us. It's actually holding us back. It's actually conditioning us to overgive, to, um, to manipulate, to uh, lead to unhealthy boundary setting and leads to burnout. Especially if you're a coach, a light worker, a healer, an author, there's like certainly this area of service where we're like, oh, absolutely, it's okay. Like I'm just bleeding from the jugular, but you're here, let me help you even more. Uh, I can't breathe any longer. You know, I don't have my own oxygen mask on, but it's okay. Let me be of service to you. And that is linked because a lot of us have limiting beliefs around value our valueness, uh, being lovable. Uh, we have challenges or limiting beliefs around worthiness. You know, we maybe grew up in an environment where we had to prove ourselves, you know, and, and, for, and it doesn't really matter why, it's, but we really, all of us have some sort of conditioning um, that being of service might actually be hindering you 
versus helping you. So, you know, earlier I'd mentioned like there's three kind of tied together. There was the financial sustainability, um, burnout and setting unhealthy boundaries. And I really talked more from a financial perspective, but, you know, from a burnout perspective, you know, if you are of that service, you know, mindset and you're in that proving and value, um, value point, right? Where you're trying to prove your worthiness or value. Um, it will lead to working long hours. Uh, it will lead to this, uh, oh yeah, I can do this, whether it's from a volunteer perspective or in your own business. You know, so there's, there's that's the boundary piece, which is, <laughs> which is connected to the burnout piece because we can't sustain the, the, we can't sustain that for long periods of time. You know, what happens too is we're conditioned to, you know, you have to work hard to be a successful entrepreneur. And there are moments, certainly, I think, when the possibility of working hard might be present. But that also is a limiting belief that success comes from hard work. I would say, mm, no, no, success does not actually come from hard work based on how I define hard work. Your definition of hard work might be different. I believe that success comes from enjoying the journey, from creating an epic life, from being aware of your, your limiting beliefs and your empowering beliefs, making decisions every day. I could go on and on and on. And today really is about this. So this burnout piece, you know, it, where it's not physically sustainable to overgive. So we actually burn our adrenals out. We um, we have so much stress in our life. We have so much um, overgiving. There's physical symptoms, right? There's chronic adrenal fatigue. There's all stress related related diseases, right? I would venture to say that a lot of that, um, especially chronic adrenal fatigue or you know burnout, we'll just say burnout, is from overgiving and not having these healthy boundaries. So a, so a healthy boundary will be different for everybody, right? We all have our own definition of what a boundary is. But what can happen is we can, when we have unhealthy boundaries, we can, um, is in the world of sales, I'll, I'll just stick to business, right? Is then if we're over giving constantly, then what can happen is um, some, your, some of your clients, and I wouldn't say all of your clients, my clients don't do this. And, and, and I share that with you because earlier I had said, when I'm having a conversation, I only work with really cool people and I don't work with everybody that wants to work with me. And so, you know, and I learned this because I was not good at setting boundaries. And so I would have people reach out um, at uh, different times of the night with an expectation that I would immediately drop what I was doing and help and, and assist. Now, in my business practice, uh, for my one-to-one -one clients, I actually have say to them, do not wait until the next time we talk for you to move through this obstacle or challenge. I am available to you. You have my cell phone number, text. And the moment that I'm available to chat, I will. Now, that doesn't mean that I drop everything I'm doing um, to have a conversation. But the next time I'm at my phone, you know, we chat. And if I can at all make it work, I, I'll chat with them right? Whether it be like via text or a phone call. Now, because of that, I have a boundary and I, you know, and, and the thing about boundaries, and again, this is my own point of view is um, I believe boundaries are for us, meaning we don't have to announce to our spouses or our children or our clients, here's my boundary, don't cross it. That's bullshit, right? Your boundary is for you. And it's really for you so that you don't allow people to cross it. Because guess what? People can't cross the boundary without your agreement. So I'll say that again, people cannot cross the boundary without your agreement. So you can have all the boundaries you want and you can tell everybody that is your boundary and they lovingly don't give a shit. I'm not saying don't give a shit about you, right? Don't take it out of context. I'm just saying people don't think, oh, I better not do that. I'm crossing a boundary. People behave how they behave. You behave how you behave. You get to decide what the boundary is and then you can make that decision. Now going, how does this relate to sales versus service? If you're coming from this place of servitude, of serving others, uh, the downside of that is your lack of boundaries. You'll, you set the unhealthy boundaries. People don't cross over your boundary, right? A boundary is crossed because you have allowed it, right? You've allowed it. And again, my own personal point of view, you don't have to go, you crossed my boundary. It's like you have a conversation. The conversation looks a little bit different. Okay, next. 
Um, the other piece of this serving versus selling is your, um, you could be neglecting marketing and, um, and sales skills. You could be thinking all you have to do is be of service to someone and you don't need to learn the psychology behind selling. You don't need to learn, excuse me, the art of sales, the art of selling. It is a skill set that anyone can learn. Um, and, and I have taught sales, oh my goodness, I think I was 20, let me see, 21. I'm, I think I'm 54. I'm in my 50s. I really don't know how old I am. It's not funny. I was born in 68. You can do the math. Um, and so, you know, that, but there is a, a, a skill set that's required for both marketing and sales. And then there's a whole other skill set required for online marketing. I actually talked about that this morning in my Pathway to Success morning call that I do. Um, I do a call every morning, 8 a.m. Mountain Center time, and I stream, I channel messages to, um, to a group of incredible women. And perhaps maybe you might want to be part of that. And if you do, please reach out to me at rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca, or you can find me on any of the social media platforms. Uh, you can look for me. It's Ranchelle, right? It's my name, R A N. C-H-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. I am easy to find. So during the morning pathway uh, success call, I was talking about online marketing is, is, is a different skill set um, required than just even marketing. It's um, there's other components that are that are required, you know, to do that. And so uh, sales as uh, uh, sk skills in sales is whether it's, you know, live or online or in person um, doesn't matter, but it, it is a, it is a skill set that's required. So I think the disservice that my um, my uh, peers are doing for you is that they're leading you to believe that you don't need to require the skill set of sales or selling, and that is again I believe because we're trying to avoid the word sales or salesperson. And why are we trying to avoid that? Well, we're trying to avoid that because we have some sort of may, um, story, some sort of experience that we've encountered in our past or our parents encountered it in the past. And it's um, it's uh, bad. It's like a dirty word to be a salesperson. I was really fortunate. Like my dad um, was in sales like um, forever. Right. And so when we used to have, okay, I'm really dating myself. We used to have like vacuum salespeople and encyclopedia salespeople come to the front door. My dad always invited them in. And he would have this fascinating conversation with, uh, with people. How did they get into it? And are they enjoying it? And is it su successful for them? And he, he would like give them tips. <laughs> My dad's like a great salesperson. And he would give them tips on, well, maybe if you try this, and what about this? And what about your training? And, and you know, so to be a salesperson in our world, um, it, you know, it was, uh, it was welcomed. It really was welcomed because you, you were helping. It's like someone has a problem and Ranchel, you might have the solution to that problem. Why would you not talk about your solution with that person? Why would you not have not have conversation? You know, when I was um, in sales training, I will often say, if you had the cure for some horrible disease, would you not like talk about the top of your lungs? Would you not like stand, you know, on a soapbox and, and pitch your idea if you had the cure for, I don't know, diabetes or cancer or MS or a cure for you know, cardiac, like challenges? Like, would you not like talk about it? Uh, hell yes. And so, you know, part of the opportunity we have is to take that same attitude, that same confidence that same concept and go, why would I not talk about what I, what, what I do? Why would I, why would I not want to be in a conversation with someone to learn more about them, to find out how I might be uh, of, of service to them, how I might be able to help them. Right. And so rather than avoiding a sales conversation, give me a high five and hell yeah, let's go find people to talk to. Let's go find people to have a sales conversation and let go of this idea that sales is a dirty word, right? And so 
because it's not. Now, chances are, if you feel like salespeople are, I don't know, usually what people say when I say, what do you think of sales or salespeople? Like, it's dirty, it's manipulation, it's, um, you know, sorry, used car salespeople, right? Like all of those, you know, all of those things. We, we immediately go into like, it's a horrible, uh, it's something horrible. It's something that's being done to us versus something that's being done for us. And so what I think is required is a mindset shift under like what sales means to you and why maybe you um, were taught, conditioned that sales is bad. And it usually has to do with the fact that your parent or grandparents sold something and then had regret afterwards and they blamed the salesperson it was the salesperson's fault that they bought that you know set of encyclopedias that no one used right um so what if you changed your attitude changed your mind about what sales really is would you feel the same way can you recondition can you uh, have a two degree a two millimeter shift in your mindset so that you can see that sales is really not not that bad. One last example before a commercial break. If you are on any medication at all, right? So I'm on desiccated thyroid. The reason I can be on desiccated thyroid is the pharmaceutical company went to the doctor and sold them on that they should carry this, that they should use this desiccated thyroid as an opportunity to help my thyroid out. That was a sales transaction, folks. If that didn't happen, I would not be on desiccated thyroid. So think about that. Sales can be something really, really positive. All right, let's go to our next commercial break. Thank you so much for joining me here. My name is Ranchelle with uh, Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle is the show on Inspired Choices Network. Thanks. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something you have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with business intuitive coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. So, opened Pandora's box today, suggesting perhaps maybe the whole attitude of service versus selling maybe isn't actually supporting you, that there's an energy to service. There's a, there's a, like everything else is a positive high vibe energy. There's a um, negative, not in wrong, but a lower vibe density energy to the word being of service or serving others. And so I really talked about that. Now I did talk about uh, sales being a skill set. And, and so I'm going to spend the last few minutes and I'm going to talk really fast um, about selling as a skill. And so, you know, one of the things that I learned, again, at a very young age was um, the importance of selling from a business perspective. And so a quick, uh, quick story. So when um, my mom and dad owned a hotel and I worked all throughout the hotel and when I was in, when I was serving, so I was waitressing and my dad said, you know, at the end, when you're filling up someone's cup, coffee cup, you don't ask them if they want dessert you tell them what desserts you have, right? So you're pouring the coffee and you say, you know, hey, Joe, I, I've got this great apple pie in the back. Can I grab you, a, you know, a piece of apple pie or maybe you want pumpkin, right? And so then the person has this opportunity to always to say, no, they don't want either, you know, they don't want pie or they might say, yes, I'll take apple or they might say, no, I'm not interested in pie. Is there anything else that you want? And so in the world of sales, we call that add on sales. And so the importance, you know, that my dad taught me is that there is a lot of leverage, there's a lot of profit in, um, in coffee, and there's a lot of profit in dessert. 
uh, most profit uh, is in alcohol, just FYI, right? And so, and I'm sharing that with you, not because profit's bad, right? But when you think about it from that perspective of a business owner, you know, really what we're, why are we in business, right? Well, we want to, we want a profit, right? Yes, we want revenue and sales. We also want profit. And so from a business perspective, just knowing that, that there were certain things that I could add on that made a huge difference, um, you know, when it comes to sales. Now, I've been a great uh, add-on sales girl since that moment in time, right? I learned at a young age, uh, so it didn't matter what retail I was in. I was always like, well, have you thought about this? Well, this this matches this or these earrings go with this diamond ring. I used to sell jewelry or this matches that. like what it didn't really matter. And so I'm sharing that with you because the story, just because there, there is an importance for us to be OK with profit, to be OK with cash. Right now, from the world of sales and the psychology behind sales is um, is that people don't really window shop anymore. So I'll leave you this, this one. I don't have, you know, it's a whole hour. I'll do the, I'll do a show here shortly about sales. But here's the thing. Um, people don't window shop any longer. People shop to shop. Now they might not make a decision that day to buy, but they're looking, they're obviously looking for something, which is why they're looking at either your product or your service. And your product or service is going to fulfill a need. And from a sales perspective or even a marketing perspective, what you really want to do is you want to find out why they are in need or why they feel that they are in need of the thing that you're selling. Why are, are they in the need of that? And when you can help them see that what they that they have this need and you have an answer to that particular need, to that problem, they have a problem you have a solution, then it will be a good fit for you, right? And that does take, which is what my point was, that does take a certain skill set. And so I would encourage you, and if you want to learn this the, the, the skill set of selling, I'm happy to share with you. I'm happy to have a conversation with you. Um, I have a couple of tools that I can share with you. Um, I can teach you sales. I can absolutely do that. If you feel like you're lacking in the skill set of sales and that's why you feel more comfortable with service or you just feel like you could brush up on your, your sales skills, I encourage you um, to reach out to me. Again, my email address is rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca or you can find me on any of the social media channels. Um, you know, so Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn are the, the three main ones that, um, that, that I'm on. And we can connect and have that uh, that, that uh, concept. Last but not least, and I won't have time to get into it, but there are five buyer types and we're a combination of two. And so one of the challenges that can happen in bar both marketing and sales is that you're going to present your materials, your um, whether you're doing a presentation or you're speaking on stage or you're writing marketing materials, you're going to come from your buying, how you buy. And, and your motivating factors. And that's a small, small percentage. So the reason why it feels like sales is hard is you're approaching it from how you buy. And you're like maybe 10% or 12% of the population and how other people buy. So the skill set that is required, both in marketing and sales, is to find out, to find out what the, the buyer types are, what the motivators are, and then you create material to speak to a broader audience. And that's something I'm certainly happy to um, to help you with. All right. Uh, I know I talked fast. In our last minute, um, what I talked about today is being of uh, being aware of be how of being a service might be a detriment to you, and it can lead to product misfit, an over emphasis on service, manipulation, financial um, the inability for financial sustainability. It can lead to burnout. You can lead to setting unhealthy boundaries. And of course, then it is neglecting marketing and sales skills. So there, all those things are the consequence of uh, the poss possibly, pardon me, the consequence if you're only coming from a place of serving uh, others and you're uncomfortable with sales. And I'm saying it that way because really what I want you to do is to be comfortable with being a salesperson because that's part of what we do. If you own a business, sales has to happen. Otherwise, we just have a hobby. Thanks so much, everyone. Have an incredible day.
Thank you for listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. Ranchell returns Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, be big, be bold, be brilliant, be you.